Hello, hello. Oh boy, what's going on? <laughs> what's up, everybody? How we doing? Sorry for the delay. A little technical difficulties. Uh, Facebook decided to completely log me out of my accounts, and <laughs> and the streaming software I use it had to be logged in. So that was a super fun uh, <laughs> little scramble fest there. So I appreciate everybody's patience and messages. <laughs> so let me uh, let me just hop into this real quick, and then we'll get going here. So. What's up, everybody? For Rip the Lip and Kyle Hervey, this is Over the Cushion, powered by MCM Contracting, serving the Lehigh Valley for 33 years, owned and operated by Mark Daniels himself. This show is all about dirt racing, covering news, current events, and talking to different drivers every week. Uh, huge thanks to our other our other sponsors, Bodie Marks Racing, the Shop Automotive Detailing, or the Shop Details.com, Smith Fabrication, the Stage One Modifieds, great class, by the way. Uh, DH Graphics, Pro Tech Roofing, and our new sponsor, Nate Freed Racing. You can see him race at Hamlin every week in the 600 micro sprint. So, I really appreciate that. Um, let me just go ahead and get Kyle here. Kyle, can you hear me? I got you, Rob. Very good. We're, I believe we're live. Double okay. check on me. Make sure. I, I have it pulled up on Facebook. <laughs> it looks like we have it have it yeah. rolling. So, we got some people the weird, here. Yeah, the weird thing is I use... Streamlabs and it makes you sign into whatever social media. Yeah. social media and so i sign into my personal facebook account that's why it always pops up as a stream on my personal account too and if for some reason it was just arrowing out because there's some new feature about facebook or something so it wouldn't let me start the stream so i had to so now we're not streaming on uh youtube unfortunately but we're here live on facebook where accounts just like I don't know that it's not gonna work until I hit the go live button, <laughs> so it's just like oh my god. <laughs> Hope for the best, I guess. Yeah. So, um, Kyle, how is how is your week? You're leading up to your big, uh, your big weekend here, and then, you know, um, you know the TQs and stuff. Um. Leading up to it was pretty boring, just you know, the normal <laughs> getting everything ready and overthinking your setup for the car. And uh, well, I mean, once we got to the track, it was it was uh, man, it was disappointing and downhill immediately. Um, basically, what happened was first practice we rolled out. I made one lap and was about up to speed. The track was really slicked off, so I hadn't shifted all the way up yet. I went to shift a gear. As soon as I shifted, there was just a complete loss of power. Um, no. I cannot, I cannot figure out exactly what caused it, but we blew the fuses out of the car and lost what? all of the power. So my first 30 minute uh, session uh, was down the drain. So I got no, no practice round one. Um, round two, we went out and I ran a couple rounds in that open practice. Uh, the car was off, so I was making adjustments mm -hmm. and I think I changed gears three times in that practice session, session, just trying to get You're close. You're scrambling, dude. Yeah. So there's real. a lot of work going on trying to get, um, you know, I had some great people working with me trying to get the tires cleaned up and mm -hmm. everything, but man, we were just so behind from losing that first practice session to even get the gearing close. And then once I got the gearing close to what it needed to be, then you can start working on the setup because yeah. the cars, the, the gearing is so huge in the TQ, right? You have so much power um, that you need to be on the limiter by the end of the straightaway to get the compression braking into the corner. Uh, because when you use the actual brakes, it kind of upsets the balance of the car and it keeps it from rotating very nicely. So oh. I, I was just off and our third round of practice, um, set our times for, 
um, our qualifying groups, and I didn't run very well in that third round, which put me in the earliest couple of the earliest groups for time trials. Yeah. And we were staying up front for the first bunch of groups that went out. Mm -hmm. But come the end, the track had changed and taken more rubber, got hotter, and the, the good guys went. And, you know, we got bumped all the way back, started in the back of our Man. our heat and got run over, blew a right rear tire and destroyed a wheel when we got used as a ramp and uh, <laughs> got black flagged, which oh, put no. us in the back. The semis on Friday were pretty boring. Oh. Um, they were very single lane for us. We were the first semi, especially. It was it was yeah. just locked down pretty much around the bottom. I mean, mm -hmm. when Eric Rudolph gets spun and goes to the back and gets stuck racing me side by side for the entire <laughs> race, like there, you know it's really hard to pass. So That's true. That's true. I just just from the beginning mm -hmm. of friday losing that one practice session put us so behind the ball oh, I bet. and the the level of competition is is so high you have to be on your a game non-stop yeah and once you get behind you're you're spending the rest of your weekend behind so yeah. unfortunately didn't make the big show yesterday um kind of got the setup and everything figured out so i have some confidence carrying everything into atlantic city but um, oh, I forgot. There's another another set of indoors coming up. I don't know yeah, when. Two, but... two or three weeks, end of January. Last Shoot. last weekend in January. So um, hopefully that goes better. Better. <laughs> uh, we'll yeah. have more practice and everything there. It's, it's just wild. The car and the track changes every single time you go out. Yeah, I mean, as hard as you are working, like those guys that are like doing well are probably working just as hard like to keep up with the track. So like just constant scrambling. Like there's like watching people race a Hamlin sometimes they'll like they'll do their their hot laps be like man the car's pretty good and then they're just like heats sit on it and then feature like they literally don't touch the car all, all night right and like indoors it seems like if it's changing that much you're going to be like f frantically sprinting around <laughs> constantly like making yeah. sure you're keeping up it, with the track it it's hard to build an like on dirt you can race you know three four times a week it's easier to build a notebook it's sure. easier to learn and everything yep. you get a lot more laps indoor you got two three times a year um and that's it i mean man it's huge in the tq um having the uh round robin practice sessions where uh if you want to go out in the first group you guys have 30 minutes open on the over the race receiver at the end when you're pulling off they tell you all right 20 minutes 25 minutes left in the session or whatever yeah and you can just pull around and go right back out on the track and like Shoot. the next group basically and that's cool it's right I, I feel guess. for <laughs> yeah yeah exactly i feel for the slingshots um because you know i always thought this watching the tqs indoor when i was running the slingshots it's like damn they get so much track time yeah and everybody else gets so little but I mean, the the TQs are, it's insane how much stuff you can change on there. Like, that, yeah, I mean, if compared you show to up, the... if you show up in a slingshot and you're mm -hmm. off, you might be able to fix it. Sure. But there's a pretty good chance if you're off, you're gonna spend the rest of your day off. Yeah. When you're in the TQ, you can you can start off off and really change a lot on that car and make it and get way it better. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, I mean, just. I, I feel for everybody else. I'm sure they all want just as much track time as, sure. as the TQ guys. But I mean, man, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of time on the track. It's a lot of sets of tires. It's a lot of, a lot of bent wheels for me. Unfortunately, this weekend, I think I bent four or five wheels, which is, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have really... to make my way down there next year, man, for sure. Oof. Cause there's a lot of people like yeah. even in some of the pits, like I haven't seen in a while. So, I mean, just t talking about the slingshots, uh, I feel bad for Brett Bieber. He, he had a, pretty much locked up and uh he said well he, i talked to him he said he had his, his brakes were going in the last four laps so you know brakes he's probably he's probably lifting a lot earlier going in the turn not making any excuses because a lot of them kind of plowed him in my opinion so i mean that it is what it is at this point yeah. but uh i thought he kind of uh had that one in the bag and then congrats to scott neary uh and brian getting, smith oh yeah brian smith oh brian my smith gosh i'm so Friday stupid night. brian smith won big big win for him big win for him that's super cool really happy to see him win um yeah. congrats to scott neary i mean dude just like can just like run like two or three races a year and win all three of them it just it doesn't matter he just like hops in the car and he's just a, a rocket ship because he finished second after that whole debacle on friday and then you know won it on saturday i didn't i didn't get to see the saturday race but 
Congrats to him. You you missed. <laughs> you missed I wish I wish I could watch it, man. I just I don't want to pay forty dollars to watch a slingshot know. race. You know. I know our guest our guest was there, so I think uh, we could talk to her about it. She was watching. Oh, cool, cool. Um, yep. But, uh, let's uh, yeah. let's let's bring her in. I know I started a little late, so I don't want to drag my feet too, too much here. Uh, our guest tonight, as you can see, Shelby McLaughlin. Uh, the She's a back-to-back -back slingshot world champion and handling track champion. So in the span of two years, she won four titles, which is uh, absolutely mind-boggling, uh, especially in such a highly competitive uh, group like the junior slingshots. Uh, moved up to all stars, uh, battled at, you know the best of the best. Scott Neary, Jared Silphy, those guys at Hamlin uh, ended up winning uh, track championship, and then in her first year in the wingless 600 micro, she actually won a race in the regular rookie division or regular. 600 division which is uh a feat unto its own i think especially that track is hard to pass so uh wow uh i'm gonna <laughs> make sure that she's not muted anymore but uh that should be good shelby thank you for joining us here on sunday yep of course of course <laughs> thank you we're just giving you some uh some props on your on your racing accolades <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so what's going on how you been um i've been pretty good i mean just race car stuff, you know, getting the 600 together, kind of, I'm still getting used to the fact that my, uh, you know, my seven, my seven slingshots not in the garage anymore, still kind of get used to that, but obviously we still have the 112, we're going to be racing that a couple times, but just, you know, mainly mm -hmm. 600 stuff, getting ready for the season, you know? Yeah, and, and, and uh, talking about that number seven slingshot, I think it might have been an emotional roller coaster for more than just you, because uh, oh, yeah. no one's ever, you know, that just that car in general is so iconic in the slingshot world and how much you've accomplished in it. Like some people may, may have been attached to it just as much as you at some point. So just seeing that go for you and for a lot of people, it's got to, it had to have been emotional, uh, uh, you know, letting it go. Yeah, it definitely sucked because, um, that car has been so many different numbers. It's had me and my dad in it. My dad raced it like, like years before I even got, into racing honestly is that He's... the number 20 is that the 20 yeah. or the 15 uh, oh my god Kyle would know Kyle would no. know <laughs> yeah Kyle's been racing like forever <laughs> yeah good stars for days <laughs> so like a little bit of backstory here when I first got into the slingshot class your dad Mike helped me out a ton and I remember racing him in that orange number 20 oh, and yeah. I don't remember it specifically but i do remember watching you in your first kid cart races when you started racing <laughs> yep that's that's what started it all that's yep. amazing and remember you running junior champs and everything like that like i remember just watching you from the time you started to you know when we end up racing together in both the slingshot and the micros yeah literally my first year ever racing in the kid cart and the champ cart i actually went two years with the two championships in the, yep. my first ever year in those cars so all worked out i mean that that really showed that i was i was meant to do it yeah they were both at snydersville right yeah that's, that's when the, the that's when the fields were you know actually pretty good yeah you know, it was field. a lot of good people there i remember watching you race against i forget did you get to run borders at all on the pavement in the champ uh yes i didn't really like it because it was really hard on my rib cage but it was actually <laughs> pretty cool i missed that place i'm not gonna lie yeah, me too, man. I've never been there. I mean, it was always obviously. The <laughs> They'll sell you a car if you go there now. They'll sell you a car? Yeah, oh, oh, what is it? A, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a, it's a used, used car, car deal. Used no, car entire deal. track and all of the facilities are still there. The pits are still there. Everything is still there. And it is just a used car parking lot. No it is, way. It is very so sad much. to look at. <laughs> they must be like, they must be like renting or leasing it to like, to, to sell the cars there. Cause like, there's no way you just like, like, have that much property or like land, and you see the racetrack there, and oh, you're it's like, not, it's not that much property. It is very, <laughs> very small. It is okay, a on. little tiny strip of land, basically. Yeah, but it was still, you know, good environment. It's a, it's a racetrack, you know. You go, you're gonna miss it no matter what racetrack goes. See on the live stream, Ron. Right yeah, now. Kyle, ask ask the next question because uh, Daddy <laughs> Duty here putting a dress on a doll. <laughs> He's like, "Could you please help me?" <laughs> oh my God, that's great. Anyway, um, what was uh? I don't remember your first races in a slingshot. Were they also at Snydersville? Um, no. I actually, 
I think I raced once with my dad at Snyersville, and we ended up venturing off to Hamlin because that's like the best track to for yep. a big slingshot driver. So yeah. we ended up going to Hamlin, and you, you ran there. really well in the juniors. What was that? You ran really well in the juniors. I remember always watching. Yeah, it was definitely it was really fun back then because you know I was racing with actually like the best of the best, and the juniors are are actually like in micros with me as well to this day. You know. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. What are, um, I mean, what are your, what are some of your favorite memories from anything that you've raced winning championships? Cause I know you've won a lot and everything that you've raced and you got a lot of wins. What are some of the favorites you have? Um, there's so many, um, definitely like, you know, I still remember my first win ever, like ever. And it's like, the kick <laughs> I just remember that excitement. It's just like, it, it was just crazy to know that I was, you know, capable of doing that. And then slingshots um definitely when they had them at sealands grove still i miss those days that was an amazing track for slingshots i like almost cried when they took it off the schedule because that was like my favorite track ever and then yeah i love that place were you running all stars there or was it were you still in juniors then no i was running juniors it was when uh tanner van uh tanner van doren was racing as that that time as well okay yeah i remember that yeah, we actually the first time we went there, I actually finished it. I actually finished like almost dead last, and um, I told my dad, I was like, "Hey, this this setup's not it's not on point. You got you got to do a little bit better than that, you know." As me as the driver, I do my part, you do your part, because my dad's the wrench man. I you know, so and then we went back a couple weeks later for the world finals and ended up taking the championship. Yeah, I I miss that place. I, I really wish, do. I wish we still went. I think it was even a speed week race at one point, but I could be wrong there. I know there was a tour race there, and we had the one world championship or something, or two world championships there. But, yeah, it's um, when they, all I remember is when they put yeah. the slingshots on the big track. <laughs> yeah, I remember that too. I remember making like one lap and being like, man, we missed the gear by about six teeth. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on the limiter halfway down the straightaway, and then the first lap of the feature, I tried to pull out and pass somebody, and it felt like I dropped an anchor, and I'm just like, wow, I can't believe how much the draft is playing in. Whew. Yeah, it was all about momentum, I'm guessing. Just yeah. Did you now, Had you gotten a race Bridgeport before you got to go to Sealands Grove, or did you run Sealands Grove first? Um, I raced Bridgeport my first season as an all-star. So okay. that was you like 20 Sealands Grove first. Yeah. So yeah, Sealands Grove. They, they. I feel like I, I also ran Sealands Grove first, and that was, I think, my first track of that type, where you know it's a nice smooth. Uh, it's yeah. hard to describe. Just real smooth track with no walls, and it just feels like you. I don't even know how to describe it. You just drive it like no other track, and I feel like I was really fast at Sealands Grove, and then when we went to Bridgeport, it just felt like it was the same, and I love that, that type it's- of track, whatever it is about it. It definitely had the same vibe. It's also, again, really smooth tracks, both of them. And I, I, I kind of like the inside walls more than tires. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, me too. I feel like I can coast around those turns a little bit better. Yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. You can kind of... The Seal and Grove ones were weird because they were like the plastic movable walls you might see oh, on yeah. like an outdoor really, go-kart track. I would really smack it every single turn. <laughs> Yeah, I remember, <laughs> this is really stupid, when we were running the first day at Sealands Grove, I was leading the race, and I, I like, dropped the right rear wheel off the backstretch because I looked up, and there was a water truck going around the big track, and it distracted me just enough where oh. I ran about six inches too wide and almost dropped the wheel off and, and lost the lead. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, God. You, did you end up winning that day? I did not. That was the day, oh, God, this was a nightmare. So they never specifically told us where the starting zone was. And me and Jared were battling for the championship and we were one and two. And there was two cones in the infield. So I'm like, that's got to be the start zone. So I kept going. They called the restart back like four times. And they kept saying that I was jumping. And I'm like, how am I jumping? I'm the leader. And then eventually they Jared jumped, like got a jump on me and they just let it go. And we like made contact into turn one and they just let let it go with him jumping me by like a car length and i was just like what happened i mean me, me and jared were fine about it i wasn't mad at him or anything like that it was just a dumb way to have the championship get decided and they after the race i asked them and they're like it's the telephone pole on the outside of turn four and i looked whoever told me that dead in the face and i said 
I'm starting inside double file with a full containment seat. How can I see <laughs> yeah. a telephone pole on the outside of the track? And what are the two cones on the infield for then? <laughs> and they just didn't have an answer for me. Oh. They're like, sucks to suck. And I just walked Sucks away. to I, suck, bro. I, I, I was so, <laughs> Get I was so upset. I was so upset by that. I mean, obviously, ha happy for Jared. Um, that was around the time him and I be started becoming good friends. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it just I wasn't fun. Yeah, tracks definitely need to like, make their starting zones a little bit more specific. They should just have a chalk, like, do what the sprint cars do. Just have two chalk lines that say, when you're in this area, you can start. Anytime, Those are the best. Anytime in this area, just go. Then yeah, like, it's easier like, to tell. Like Snydersville does that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the Tulsa shootout rule they were doing with the juniors, which is they had a quad pacing the field, and just as soon as the quad hits the infield, you can go whenever you want. Like, that's <laughs> iRacing style is pretty much whenever yeah, the pacing is off. Just don't I mean, hit the quad, people. Just don't hit the guy start, in the quad. <laughs> let me start the race if I'm the leader anywhere between three and the start finish line. Like, whatever. Yeah, or something. Or like, I don't, I don't know. I don't I, think it would cause that many problems. It, and it's not that hard to do. Just put a little, little chalk down or a little spray paint or something. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I got, a, I got a good question. Ooh, qu you're gonna ask the question. Okay. I, I, yes, I, I right. have a really good question. All right, I'm listening. What do y'all prefer? Do you guys prefer when, like, you're taking the green, the line, do you like it going into the turn or coming out of the turn? Like, when the green drops. That's, you mean, like, that's more of a three, Kyle question. And, and like, three <laughs> or off of four. Like, like a Greenwood style or a Hamlin style? Like, coming off the corners or, like, Greenwood where you're going into the corner? So, I don't understand the going into the corner. And I, I, I don't race, but I'm just, I don't get it. I think the Greenwood style starts and Lanco style starts are better for not causing accidents. Yeah, I agree. You kind of have a little bit of speed built up going through three and four coming to the green instead of everybody launching in the middle of the corner and running each other over. I think it's also better for some people back in the field. Uh, it sucks on single file restarts. Because oh, I've oh, yeah. <laughs> I've had times where the leader's already green and like going into one at Greenwood and I'm in the back coming off of two and I haven't even shifted yet Ooh, and I'm dude, just yeah. like this sucks. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's a tough question. It really depends on the track. I think uh... I think it's better for the the bigger divisions like 600s. That's a great rule. Like starting into yeah. three, but like slingshots. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I think it's better for the slingshots to come out of the corner because mm -hmm. of just how much less speed that they have. Sure. I'd and prefer also... I think I would prefer if if they now like this is also what they do indoor. They want you to be straight before they fire. And the start zone yesterday at Allentown was the last set of tires and they kept telling us be straight when you fire and everybody's starting in the middle of the corner. If the tracks tell, I would prefer it if tracks said we are starting off of four when the front row is straight facing down the straightaway. That way there's a good launch and drag race, mm -hmm. but they actually police it and don't have this BS where they just let the leaders go in the middle of three and four. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. I don't know. That's, yeah, that, that's more of a Kyle question than a yeah, Ron I question. I, it's, I, it's, yeah, it, it's hard. <laughs> It's hard because I think it comes down to the track and whoever race director is and what they're going to call a jump start and whether it's double file or single file and if you're allowed to pass before you get to the start finish line. Um, like Greenwood puts the cone out there and you have to be single file through the cone and then you're allowed to pass in three and four coming back to the stripe, yeah. which is fine. I do like that for, but the, if you, for the... If, if you have a track that's like, okay, we're going to start in three, but you can't pass until you pass the start finish line. And it's like, well, what's the point then? Well, that's, that's like big sprint car rules, right? They have like, they leave a cone in the middle of the straightaway at yeah. the, either like you have to, you cannot pass before this cone. And then after that you can pass, right? Like in a single file style. Yeah. Linda does that. Linda Speedway, they do that as well. I mean, yeah. it, it makes so that, you know, you're not like jumping the, the starts too bad. Like, uh, like Shelby got the kind of ass end of it at the end of the season in the slingshot because <laughs> whoever oh was God. behind her kept jumping her every single time and they're just like it's fine it's fine just let them go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think I ended up getting that person back twice, but yeah, it's just frustrating when you're just like you 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 get a couple like even when you're 
passing a few people and then it, the caution keeps coming out so you like you're you have to pass the same person like four times you're yeah like, when yeah. you get back behind that person it's just like all right all this work for nothing mm -hmm. cool feels good a like good yep. good boost to my morale here in the car. Yeah. <laughs> i think my final answer on the question mm -hmm. is going to be i don't care where we start the race as long as it's consistent and, and the pen the penalties are handed out accordingly when somebody's called for a jump. Yeah, like and definitely as long as like the two front drivers are like even with each other, you know. Yeah, I mean, I usually I just, yeah. Well, it's the most it's the most aggravating thing is the jump start rules because they're not consistent. I mean, there's they're dumb, there's even they're one not. time where where me and Scott fired side by side going into three at action track, and I got a better run than him off the top. They put me back two spots for a jump start, and Scott after the race was like, "What happened?" I'm like, "I really don't know." <laughs> oh my gosh, I was I was right behind you guys when that happened. I was yeah, literally. I think cool. Faith. Cool. I think Faith was third in my other yeah. car at the time, and I was just like, <laughs> I took the happening? lead, and they sent me back, <laughs> and I'm like, "You got to be kidding me!" That wasn't even close to yeah. a jump. Yeah, I, I was. I completely remember that. I yeah. There's no. There's there's. I'm not allowed to win at action track. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Neither am I. Like, uh, I, like last season, I tried. I went. Oh. I went my one shot, and I literally like popped the chain. Uh, oh, I watched spot. that on flow. <laughs> yeah, my my fuel line came off. I'm just like, oh my gosh, my seat came off oh. the freaking. My seat came, snapped off the frame. Oh my god, I was watching it with yeah. my dad, and I was like, oh, watch that number seven. She's gonna whoop their ass, and then like yep. as soon as you start, yep. it's like, Bleh. I was like. You know what? Don't you know she's really good? All right, she's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously. I just I had such bad luck. I just yeah. I gave up at action track with the slingshot after I sold my seven. I was just you know. You started 600. doing you started doing pretty good in the six hundred there. I mean, you were I I think I saw you lead a couple laps in a, a heat and just like good solid finishes. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. it's it seems like it's a whole different animal once you get to the feature because those guys like Christian Bruno and. Steven Snyder and Colin White, those guys are just like, I don't know what's going on, but they're like, they're nuts. <laughs> they're always really fast. Oh my, I can, I'll never figure them out. I just, I don't understand. It's just, their, their driving style is so different and like so unique. You'll, like, you'll, no one will ever be able to figure out how they drive. Right. I feel like that's how, how it goes with this, with the 600s. Cause like everyone, it, it seems like with everyone, it takes them a couple years. Like I know, uh, like no, if he, started in a 600 and then it took him i don't know two three years or whatever and then the one year he just smoked everybody in halen and won like seven or eight races right but like it yeah. took him that three plus years or whatever even colin he raced 600s for how how many years with his dad and then now he's really coming into fruition to be like an unstoppable like he should, he finished 10th at the at tulsa you know what i mean like it just yeah. seems like it takes a lot longer to get that comfortable I don't know. Maybe maybe that's just me from a spectator standpoint, but I don't know how you two feel because no, you're both you're both kind of rookies in this division, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's that's just from my my point of view because it seems like it takes everybody a, quite a while. I think maybe that's why they stay in the rookies for so long. But <laughs> I don't I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely a really nice division though. It's 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 completely different from any other division that you'll know. It's so aggressive. And, like, you're just always on the gas, it seems. It I is. Don't... But with the open wheel stuff, you kind of, it's just, you know you can't touch each other, you know? It's just, I feel like there's more respect involved. Unless it's TQs. <laughs> well, I don't know that experience, but I probably believe you there. <laughs> uh... Kyle, let her, let her take your TQ for a couple pr laps at a, whatever, the place where oh, they, they, they do the turkey derby. No asphalt yeah. for me. No asphalt? <sighs> All right, that's okay. Dirt's better. Dirt's better. In my opinion, yeah, I went. I ran asphalt like a couple years ago for the first time in a while, and I was literally dirt tracking it. Like I was <laughs> drifting around the corners. I was like, was everyone's burning the tires off. <laughs> Did you see me last night in the TQ? Because that's what <laughs> hey. I was doing, and it wasn't fast. Hey, if you can't, if you can't make the show, you got to be the show. <laughs> Hell that's yeah! Exactly I, I, give him a show. I had one of our previous <laughs> guests, Ron. I was actually trying to find the photo of it. I don't know where it went. Uh, mm -hmm. I I don't know if you probably didn't see it. It was on my Instagram. Joey Amantia slipped into the TQ, and uh, we took some photos with him in the car. And oh, uh, did he really? 
Oh I my saw God. that. Oh, he was it there? Was oh, dude, everybody he, was there. I should have. I wanted had, to go so bad. <laughs> he had the biggest smile on his face. <laughs> and his it dad's was probably like, awesome. no, get the out of that just, car. <laughs> he was just sitting there giggling, and it was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I should have just let him take the car out, man. I was having a rough go. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe that would have gave you some, like, you know, owner's happiness watching someone Let's, else. <laughs> let the their... big show Let the big show take the 24 for a spin. Hell yeah. yeah that would be great. I would really pay just to see him race a TQ. <laughs> <laughs> I think he'd be pretty good. He's got, I well, think he'd be good, well, He ra- runs all those gigantic, like, you know, 410 cars. Like, it, it must make these, like... Uh, like driving the the big sprint cars has to make the the micros feel like go karts, like in oh, comparison. He, yeah, he literally told me that he, I guess he's um doing like a he I guess he's selling some of the six hundreds, but he always tells me that goes oh I hate the six hundreds, but he's just like I can't get away from them, you know. <laughs> he <laughs> just what... has bad luck. Like I, really yes, does, does. He... in the six hundred really bad. Oh my god! It Action sucks. Track last year like there I there was like what th- two or three races in a row where i think he was leading and something happened and just one was like the fuel pump shut off and he just disappeared something else broke another time i'm just like that's crazy poor guy so um shelby you were did you go to the world championship this year or no With um your... at that at that new track yeah no but my dad your did. dad went yes gotcha okay we won't even talk about the worlds because that's if you were there i'd talk about it but um you were at the indoors correct uh yesterday yeah did you have you ever run indoor slingshots or do you just go to watch? So a lot of people ask me to do it or like you know like like oh why don't you do it? I'm just like well I don't I can't afford that. <laughs> In many it's ways tough. I cannot afford that. What were you just helping Cody? <laughs> um no I don't go in the pits. I just I don't see a reason for me to go in the pits. We always get like the bar seats at the place. It's like the best oh, seat to have. Oh nice. What did you think That's of the What did you think of the races? Were you there both days or just the one? Um, just Saturday, but I was actually, I was so excited to see that Brian won just like, you know, right? I, it's so great to see different winners, you know, and not the same winner every single time. Yeah. I mean, congrats, like, congrats to Scott as well, but it's just, it's good to see other people <laughs> have a smile on their face. Yeah. Lose. And like Brian, Brian's like a, he's a, he's a grinder in, in like gaming terms. Right. Cause he's been just like always, I always see him at Hamlin last couple of years, like just trying to get that win. And like, just oh, he's always getting better. And now yeah. he's got his win. At, he's got the win at Hamlin. He's always fast. Now he gets this one to put the check on the the race shop wall. So like, I was super pumped to see it. he was able to to hang on and get, get that win. Yeah, I've known Brian for years, and it's just you know, it's just him and his dad. You know, you got to give credit to the guys that just it's just a two person team. You got to give credit to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agree. And he definitely deserves it. Yeah, yeah it so was a good run. <laughs> So circling back to you, what's the plans for 2023? Is it just 100% all in 600? Are you going to try to race the slingshot here and there, or um, and like what kind of tracks are we looking at for uh, you know regular a regular season? I guess are you running for points too? That's another one. Yeah. So <laughs> with we weren't really sure in the beginning, but we ended up having a lot of sponsors hop on with us. Cool. So it's actually it changed our plans a little bit. So. We are going to run Kutztown full time. And then we're going to go travel to like Lime Rock, which is in New York. We're going to mm-hmm. go to the skyscraper at Bridgeport if it actually happens this year. <laughs> yeah. um, um, we're going to run Greenwood pretty much every Saturday. And like, un- unless like another big race comes up, then we'll go to that. Like, say like the 750 to win at Hamlin, we'll go to that instead of going to Greenwood that week. Gotcha. Oh, so you're not well, going to go to Greenwood um, every week? Like, you're not going to run points there. No, it's kind of just going to be like a filler track, you know? Like, if I'm not, if there's no other big race, bigger races, then I'm going to go to Greenwood. Is there, like, like any reason why you wouldn't run points there? Or just, uh, you're going to be running Kutztown, and then that's your kind of your main focus? Um, I'm a person that likes to travel more instead of just sticking to one track because for years in the slingshots, we stick to one track for so long. Mm-hmm. And then once we started venturing out and like looking at other places, I actually gained like, you know, more skill and just helping myself with just driving a car. It just helps a lot more when you're traveling to different places instead of staying at one other one specific track. Yeah, absolutely. I'd feel the exact same way. I spent so many years just running like Snydersville and Hamlin that when I started going other places, I got so much better. It's it's I love 
I love going around. That's why I used to love the <laughs> slingshot tour so much. I honestly miss how it used to be set up. I know. It was it was that was one of my favorite times of the year. Just like like when even when the world finals used to be like a lot bigger, like again, the Seals Grove or even Linda's a couple years ago. Even though I'm I love Linda's, but it has its fair shares, you know. But <laughs> um, I just I feel like it's more of a 600 track than a slingshot track. Yeah. So yeah. I always felt like I was I was actually excited about the fact that they ventured off and looked into a new track for last year for the World Finals. Again, I don't know how the track actually was. I never saw it, but mm-hmm. I was I was so glad to know that there was actually make like a, an effort was being made for the slingshot community. You know. Yeah, definitely. And hopefully this year for the slingshots, we can uh, continue to build on uh, speed weeks from last year. I know it wasn't like that big of a thing, but I was super pumped to go to venture these other tracks. And my first time at like Linda's and first time at Kutztown and all these other places. So it was really cool to to go there and just meet some more people. I mean, I ended up talking to Brett Beaver like every night. Which is boring. Like, come on, Brett. Let somebody else win. Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) But, I mean, yeah, definitely we're going to 100% do Speed Weeks. I look, I was, I loved it last year. I made the, I made the A-Main at Linda's, but ended up crashing on, like, lap three, and my injection ended up popping off. So. Oh, would you get sprayed with fuel? (laughs) Um, I don't really remember. All I know is I got, I got (laughs) ran over, and I didn't think about the fact that the injection could have been popped off, so... Uh, me thinking i tried to start the car and it wouldn't start so i was like oh, i'm gonna pop the clutch even though you know i'm just making it worse <laughs> over here i wasn't paying attention but then i eventually looked over and i was like oh all right there's the problem so it, it bummed me out but at least made me happy to know that i officially made an a main during speed weeks yeah and like 100 cars a night is bonkers it seems like this is that's probably the premier speed weeks of the year basically for these cars i don't know how yeah. it is in other states and i know it's growing in the midwest and all these other places but i'm guessing it's going to be even bigger this year with going to all these other tracks and stuff oh and it's I, gonna yeah. be nuts. it's gonna be nuts i'm gonna have to plan ahead and see if i can get to a couple of these because i would love to be there in person you know what i mean and yeah. just see, meet all these people and, and see you make the mains again but <laughs> I'm a little worried about airport because it's a it's a it's a bull ring track, you know. I've never been there. I know a lot of people that have been there. I heard the racing's pretty good, mm-hmm. but a lot of people, again, since it's a bull ring, people tend to junk their stuff, you know. Have you, have you gotten to run shell hammers in the micro? No, oh. I've not. That's ran a bull. bull ring that's a bull it, ring. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I would I would give shell hammers a shot before you go down to airport. I think it'll help. Airport's bigger. Yeah. There I would you say. go. That's airport's, a good idea. I would describe airport as somewhere between um, uh, like Lanco and shell hammers. Cause it's, it feels smaller than Lanco. I mm-hmm. don't know if it actually is. It's a little bit wider corners and it's pretty banked. It would be like if it would almost be like if Hamlin was a little bit shorter straightaways and like an actual oval instead of a peanut. Are you able to run a, the top at airport? I have peanut. only run the slingshot there. Um, <laughs> And mm. you could kind of run the middle and the bottom. I'm, pr- you're not going to be all the way up against the fence, I would say, but you can definitely sure. run a second lane. Okay, so it's it's definitely like a two lane track, all, all, like all the time. Yeah, I I mean, it's going off of. I know some people have videos posted of it. Um, obviously, one lane usually gets more preferred. Um, but when I was there, some people say the track's really smooth a lot of the time. When I was there, it was really bumpy in the slingshot that's when jared ran for me and yeah. uh it was really rough i don't know how the micros would take it or not it, it was kind of like how lanco has been the last couple times we were there with the slingshots where it gets kind of kind of rough around the middle bottom yeah I, I talked to a couple people that ran there like even uh aiden donaldson like how he ran there a couple years ago yep. um i mean he that was like his i think it was like his rookie season in the 600 and he went there for the 100 lapper yeah and he Jeez. said it was pretty good I can't imagine. 100 laps. I'd be yeah, dying. I'll, I'd be dying. I don't think he finished. Hey, the, the 100 <laughs> lapper, that when they had the 100 lappers at Hamlin in the slingshots, that was dreadful itself. I did a 50 lap in a slingshot, and I was like, is this over yet? Like, obviously, I'm in the back. I'm not, like, competing, right? I'm just, like, enjoying myself making laps in a, in a race car. 
And I'm just like, holy yeah. shit, this is, yeah. <laughs> this takes forever. The only problem I had is my back was hurting so bad and your hands start cramping. Like they're literally molded to the steering that's, wheel at the end. Yeah, that's oh, my issue God. with those long races. I could go all day, but my hands cramp up really bad. Aren't you supposed to be light on the, you're not supposed to like squeeze or grip the wheel too hard? Easier that, said it, than done, Ron. I know. Well, when I, when I would race, I would, I would <laughs> clutch like crazy, like white knuckle it, and then I'd realize i was doing it and like lighten my grip but like it's all it's like an instinct to like hold on really tight while you're dri while you're driving um <laughs> i don't know yeah. sometimes it's difficult okay i mean it, probably the faster the car gets right um maybe it's odd because it's not even the rough track that wears your hands out i feel like the smoother the track is the more it wears you out like when it the tracks like dry mm -hmm. slick and you're really working the wheel and putting a lot of small adjustments into it to keep it going around and in a straight line, that's when I feel like it wears me out the most. I mean, I feel like the worst for me, for like my experience is in the micro, when you're like after a long race, like say it's like green the checkered, no cautions, and you go to try to like grab the clutch and your hands cramp and you can't <laughs> pull the clutch. And it's just like, oh my gosh. And then you finally get it and you're just like, just, oh, it's you just like stall the car out and you're like, Dude, I'm just gonna let them push me to the scales. I can't do this. I don't. I don't think I've done that yet. It's probably oh, going to happen. But I, I had that happen one of my first races at Shell Hammers. Like my hands cramped up so bad, and I Jeez. honestly, I actually couldn't get the car restarted, which <laughs> definitely helped me. But I couldn't. My hands hurt so bad, I couldn't pull the clutch in. The car wouldn't start either way, and I'm just Ooh, like, someone no. push me back. <laughs> Or, yeah, definitely another thing is when your neck starts cramping and you can't hold it up straight anymore. <laughs> Those are the worst. That hurts. Jeez. And then when a caution comes, you just let yourself relax. Do you feel the same way? Like, the slingshot doesn't get super hot in the car. No, The not micro, really. do you feel like you're just getting cooked in the micro <laughs> after oh transitioning from the slingshot? <laughs> Especially when, like, the race is over and you're, like, going into the pits or something. Oh, my gosh, I'm boiling because the engine's, like, right next to you and your oh. legs are, like, oh. the panel. It's the worst. It feels it's... like you're in a sauna. There's one, like, again, one of the first races I had at Shell Hammers because there's not a ton of air moving because everybody's so nose to tail and you don't have long straightaways. Yeah. And the fan, the, you know, the triple X, the rad vent straight onto my legs. Oh. I, <laughs> I was like just cooked. I couldn't Jeez. move. I, I've never been so hot inside of a race car. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm literally my first time in micro I was thinking to myself I'm like is this supposed to get this hot <laughs> <laughs> all right I'm glad I'm not alone the slingshot's nice and cool now I used to complain when it was a hot day or something at action track but uh man it's, it's not that bad once you start like racing you don't even think about it you know yeah I just shut now, it off I think you I think I just saw that you posted the other day you had run a modified over the summer didn't you Got um, to practice in one. So that was actually a couple of years ago. I was ran uh, James Coslow's car. Okay. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, I actually did get a modified ride offer for this season as well. What's That's so? Why, so why didn't you take it? I don't know if I'm gonna take it. We're not really sure yet because I, I really I fell in love with the micro, so I kind of want to focus on that. But yeah, cause we might give up like a couple Fridays here and there. We might go run the modified. So I don't know. I, now, I have more focus on the 600 right now. Sure. Yeah. And they're two different, totally different driving styles. I'm sure. I mean, Pouch Junior does it, but like he's got a lot more experience in the modified. Now, is it a modified or is it a crate? So I have the option between a small block 358 or a crate oh. modified. But if I were to do this modified ride, I'd probably choose the 358 because yeah. I, heard the, yeah. I heard the 602 division is full of clowns. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think, I mean, you're not wrong, but you're not, I mean. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know someone who would say well, it's, that. It's not a lot of power and it's like an oversized slingshot I, from what I've heard. You know yeah, I, mean? I was just talking about this yesterday and somebody's like the 602 class is cool when you're young but it just creates bad habits because there's not a ton of power you can kind of just keep your th foot down in it and that, that's what it yeah. is yeah so. like like when i talked to uh doug smith when he went from crates to modifieds yeah. he said he's he's not there's some laps where he's not even full throttle because like you know one you don't want to spin the tires and you know you're going in and you, you got to let it roll and then you're like you know it's more more pedal pressure 
which, you know, running the 600 might actually uh, help you a lot in the bigger car because you're already doing that in the 600. You know, you're, you can't be just like flat foot off, flat foot off, right? Well, in these faster and bigger cars, I feel like it's more throttle control. Like with your throttle control, it also controls your turning. So like in a, in a micro, for example, if you're going and you let off the throttle, that thing will turn right so hard on you. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Well, like look, you're like dry, you're literally steering with the throttle in these faster and bigger yeah. cars. Well, you were, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I, don't wanna, I don't want to cut you off. Um, <laughs> well, you were there when I, when I drove a 600 for the first time and yeah. I didn't get back in the throttle soon enough and I spun out. So I'm still, I don't, I, I mean, granted, I only have about six laps in a, in a 600 uh, altogether, but like, I still but don't know how to make a turn. Like, but in those in those six laps, you got to understand what you're supposed to do. Oh, hundred percent. I just like, yeah. I I understand that when you're talking about racing, you need more seat time because like, it was like I could get it to go, you know, a couple laps, and then I just can't seem to get it to to drive like everyone else is driving. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But here's the thing: it's since weird. you were, you got into a micro, so now you understand the concept. So next time you get into another one, you'll know what you can improve on true and i think we might i might be able to do it again this year so f fingers crossed probably the same car but um hopefully a little more a little more confidence hey, <laughs> just like just get back on the throttle hard and steer it out i guess because like i lifted too long and it just it i i think i entered at the correct speed i just like didn't get back in the throttle to keep the momentum forward and it just yeah. looped, it looped me and i was like gosh dang man I don't want to spin out against in front of everybody, and I was the only one out there too. <laughs> yeah, that definitely puts a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was super fun, but uh, yeah, speaking of the 600s at uh, Hamlin, I actually want to pull up a clip here if I can. Oh, this is perfect. Look at that. Um, so this is a clip from I don't know if you can see the stream or not. Um, I know Kyle can probably have it because he's pulled up, but uh, this is the actually the I don't know how many laps we're in right now, but this is the actual week that you won at Hamlin. There's a good I amount actually, of cars. I cannot see the video, just letting you know. Okay. So basically, we're, you know, toward the last quarter of the race, you're starting single file, Tony Perlanti's second. Uh, I can't really tell who's third or fourth. Is that Beeler or Rochelle that's in third? I think so. And then uh, Michael Nose back there, I think that's uh, Metzger. Uh, but, I mean, Tony Perlanti won gosh six races that year this last year and he won the uh the track championship so you know seeing how much speed you have compared to you know someone who ended up winning the whole thing and it, like for the most part you two were broken away the, like everyone else is pretty even they're all together but i mean you pretty you you two basically checked out like if you could remember can you walk me through like that night or like that race specifically since it's you know your first wing was uh, when? Sorry, my dad just walked in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to get out of here. <laughs> um, well, what, what I was saying was, you know, you're running against people like Parlanti who's been running a 600 so long, and he won the championship with like six six races, you know, and uh, all these, I mean, there's a good, good number of cars there um, for the most part. So... Um like, can you walk me through the night or just, like, that specific race to, like, you know, the feeling stuff? I know I interviewed it after that night, but just, like... Um, I have to try to remember. I remember more of my bad nights at Hamlin, like, blowing up and stuff more than that race, to be honest. The, the, but... the, the what, what's the saying? Uh, the losses feel worse and the winnings feel good type, type thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, or, sure. In a, in a different in a different way, your your losses feel worse than your your winnings, you know, feel great. Yeah, I, yeah. I can, I <laughs> Donnie Lang I just told uh, <laughs> Donnie Lang just told Mike he needs to hit the recliner. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, that's one of my supporters. Nice, Love nice. It. But yeah, I mean, but... they had a stacked field. I mean, a, a lot of cars showed up that night, and the the Nulls were there too. Mike's usually super fast there. Um, um, There's a lot of people there. Yeah, it was definitely around that time. It was when uh, me and the Nolfs were um, still a team at the time before we bought the car. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of the information for the car actually came from Randy himself and helping us 
you know, accomplish something. So yeah. just going into that night, I kind of just had this, like, my mindset was completely different that day. I do remember that. I was kind of just like, I was so focused on the night. I'm just like, like I want to accomplish something, you know? And then, so when I saw that I started on the pole and the feature, I was like, all right, this is my chance. Even though I'm starting pole, it doesn't matter. We can still get the win no matter what. So I just, I kept that mindset in my head, you know? Um, I don't really, I forgot who started next to me. I think it might've been Parlanti. Yeah, I think so. But it was Tony. I do, all I remember is I, it's always a thing that I do is I, I coast very slow to the, to the line, the starting line, and try not to make any rev noises, no, no signs of the fact that I'm about to, I'm about to take off. So you mm-hmm. kind of just coast slow to the line and you just take off when you think that the driver next to you is going to least expect it. Oh, so yeah. as soon as I saw that, I got that jump. Mm-hmm. It was pretty much game over from there because game as over. soon as that happened, I was out by myself. I figured out the track more than I, I was the first person to like figure out the track. So it was kind of just like, I don't know, just hammer down and don't look back. <laughs> yeah. Cause uh, I'll tell you what, you might start slow, but you know, one starts slower than, than Tony on the end track for sure. <laughs> and I know he yeah. got so much yeah. crap for it last year, but um, yeah. and... no, no offense to Michael himself, but when I was leading the race, I did look over and I saw his car on the other side of the track. So I was like, "Hey, I'm, I must be doing something right." Yeah, because right now we're uh, the part in the video about halfway through it. You are checked out about I don't know entire corner. You know what I mean? Whole straight away. You're straight away. Yeah, like you're just cruising. You were cruising. It was uh, it was super exciting to watch because we I've watched you you know run a junior, run an all star, and now you're up to this one and you're winning in every every car you get in. It's, so it's super it's cool. It's it was definitely an exciting night, but I think the best the best part of this video is watching my dad in the left hand corner. <laughs> just all, all the hand signals going on. I'm just, oh yeah, he, he's he's, he's like the number one supporter. And when I used to when I used to film when uh, you were still in juniors at the time, and this is when they let people onto that place where I film on the front of the. Yeah. the thing uh yeah like where i'm standing they used to let people yeah. like line up and watch the races there and yeah, i used to have to be a spectator up there i, I love <laughs> i was like that's not in the house and no one really knew i was filming because i just started and i just had an iphone on a little tripod a little plastic tripod oh, right. so like i would like film and your dad would be just like <laughs> yelling and carrying on his hands flying all over the place yeah. oh gosh people watch the videos just to like listen to Listen to what he was saying and stuff. It was so great. Like yeah, he's just so animated. I, when I'm on the racetrack, I, I literally I look at him every single lap that I can because, I mean, you have to have someone out on outside of the track telling you different things that you can't see. You know. How do you even how do you even see him? Because like you're like you're so low compared to well, where the stands are. You know what I mean? Like you're. I I usually tell him like that day to either wear a bright shirt, or he'll. Uh, he'll wear a headlamp and he'll flash the light at me before we go green so I can locate where he is and it just I if I when I find him I just I look I look at him every single time like every chance I can get unless if I, there's times where I couldn't see him at all and it sucks but you kind of just have to maybe maybe get him the uh the sticks that they use in a uh, like late model racing the little glow sticks yep. he can oh give you gosh. he can give you like how far away you are <laughs> to the yeah, next person I, 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 I'll buy him those. We I'm gotta, yeah, we gotta step lamp. up his uh, his game here. We gotta step him up. <laughs> I, Mike always has that headlamp on. There have been times where he walks up and has a conversation with me, and I'm like, "Yep, does he know this he's is on?" The, or he's what? always like, got the headlamp. I'm just, <laughs> and just, I'm just, Full I'm just chief, blinded baby. by the headlamp. <laughs> no, that's hilarious. My yep. dad usually gets lost and stands someplace where I can't make heads or tails of if it's him or not. And I usually just give up and just figure it out. <laughs> yep, yep. That's pretty much what I do when I can't find my dad. I hate when you like work out someplace. Like, all right, I need you to stand here. I think like it's specifically Lanco. I'm like, stand on the top row of the middle bleachers in the corner, and I'll be able to see you. And then I went out for the feature, and I'm like, there is a light right behind him, and I can't see anything there. <laughs> I chose it's, the wrong it, spot. Yeah. <laughs> it is very difficult to see like anything outside the track at Lanco because it's so banked. Yeah, it oh. and the light. The, yeah, when you're going like down the straightaway and you look up toward the bleachers, you're just staring into the spotlights. It's. Oh yeah. yeah, when you when you're turning right down the straightaway, then you know it's a really banked place. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. What um, what are some of your favorite tracks to run at? In, In the micro, the slingshot or the micro, either. Um, 
definitely for the micro. Oh, I Bridgeport was definitely on top of my list for a while until I started getting really bad luck there. <laughs> so it kind of like it's still on like then my it turns top. Sour. <laughs> but for number one, ooh, I would definitely put Lime Rock up in New York. I went Man. there last year for the today show, and uh, I'd, I'd probably put that at the top of my list next to Kutztown for sure. Oh, I'm trying to think. Is that the track that like Beeler, the Beelers um, went to as well? Oh. Um. I know the Fosse's race there. The Fosse's? Because there's a track up in New York that I had never heard of that they went to, and when they came back, they were like, it was the best track we've ever raced at. It was probably Lime Rock. I think it was. I wonder if it was the same race. It was toward the end of the year? Yes. Yeah, then I think it was that race. That's really cool. I gotta. I want to make my way up there at some point. I love that place. It's literally a top side track and a bottom side. There is no middle lane. The whole middle lane is complete black. So there's literally only... <sighs> middle i mean top and bottom and mm -hmm. then the slider line the slider line just throw it in there they'll get out of the way paul ennis <laughs> wants to ask what you thought of the stage one. Ooh. um yeah i can't see any, any comments so thank you kyle <laughs> <laughs> i gotcha paul paul's paul's like all all in on the stage one now so <laughs> i think the stage one thing was two years ago i got into um, I got into Richie Smith's car. I got into the Knopf's car as well. Mm -hmm. That's when they still had the stage one when Evan was running it. But those were like the only two cars like I officially raced other than I raced like I, I drove Michael Simone's car. I drove Jeremy Hoffman's car and Jeff Heinlein. I, I, I only drove those to test them because I wanted to. I like I love the stage ones. You got to love them. But I just I wish they had more love towards them and more tracks available instead of just shell hammers lanco and hamlin yeah that's such a good class man and richie does such a great job with helping everybody and make sure and like i don't know it just seems like a really close-knit community that they have there for the most part yeah. you know what i mean he's willing like, I to help to, everybody i like i had to go to a shop the other day to pick up some panels and he's just he's there by himself just working hard you know you got like i give credit to people that just work so hard just by themselves all the time you know true true oh yeah i wanted to ask you like since this is your that was quote unquote your first win i guess it wasn't your first win in the micro but it was first wingless win um like what goes what's what's the mindset going into like the last few laps like i know you're focused on racing but when you see the white flag come out and you're leading like um because per personally i've never even been in like a top 10 situation so like i don't know the mindset of like besides like the racing video games like like, do you get, like, the butterflies in your stomach on the last lap? Or are you just, like, so conditioned at this point from winning so much in the junior and the all-star that you're just, like, just, like, you know, business as usual, get her done and get that checkered um, flag? My reaction's obviously a little bit different in the micro because it's a new division and I'm not used to that division, like, winning in that division just yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a lot more excitement for winning in a new car, new division. So, but... I mean, I don't really, I don't really think anything. Just run the line that you know is fast. Um, a lot of people on the last lap like to run the bottom because you never know who's behind you. You never know who can throw a slide job on mm -hmm. you and out of nowhere, and you'll lose the lead. You know, so I feel like it's always better to just cruise the bottom unless you unless you know that the top is a lot faster, then go for it. But I always feel like the safest option is around the bottom, just so no one throws a slide job on you out of nowhere. <laughs> gotcha. You ever get nervous, like? you know uh coming to like get a win or anything like even in the slingshot or is it just uh you've done it a bunch but it's every every win is exciting you're, you're gonna remember all of them i mean some are more exciting than others some of them are just meh you know like <laughs> yeah like when I, when I raced hamlin for a while it's just kind of like eh well another win gotta move on <laughs> to the next week you know? <laughs> like business as usual we're here for points man you gotta do what you gotta do you, you get the win you move on <laughs> that's great that's great man when when are we gonna get to see you at the tulsa shootout true um can we do this for next year here's the thing i'm i'm going to tulsa next year just not to race you're bringing the car me and kyle will, will tote it down there well here's the thing 
I only have one car, and it's best to go to the Tulsa shootout with two or more cars. Yeah, yeah but what if what if you get on to watch, and then we just show up with your car? Would you race I it? Mean, I would have no choice. Okay. Noted. Obviously. Put that in the notebook, Kyle. Oh just Ron, Ron, write the check now, the $1,500 from yes. Rip the Lip to park the trailer inside. Yep. Uh, oh, wait, it <laughs> costs that much to park the trailer? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, uh, we're going. It's either a thousand or fifteen hundred. We're going to, to watch, boys. Inside, we're yes. going to watch. We we yeah, race. There we go. Change it up real quick, huh? No, we're bringing your car too. Let's do it. <laughs> we can fit them both in the same trailer. Let's go. Oh yeah. <laughs> you wait. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I want to go so bad, but I'm like, I got one car. I'd have yeah. to buy so much stuff to either flip it to outlaw or A class, because I think our PA stuff is considered outlaw, but it's not like a true outlaw. I, you just, I mean, just, if you're it's low on power, commitment. there's a guy with a just the A-class motor that made the outlaw feature, right? You could yeah, do it. Yeah, I don't know what it was. I forget what his name was. Yeah, what do you think? all I know is you just take, it. You just take, like, what do you think they spend in in the however many days there? They, they take, what, 10K? I probably? would probably think around 10 grand. <sighs> Man. I need but... to start my own business. The only the only thing is I I so badly want to do Tulsa like it's on my bucket list but mm -hmm. in order for me to do that I would need another car or I bring my car and get another ride so yeah. I have two cars. That's tough, Which, man. Yeah, it's very tough. You got it's a lot of commitment for sure. Yeah, but it would be so it would be freaking cool to watch a race there. Oh yeah, it would definitely get my name out there a lot more. But you Gosh, know, we I just do it. We got. All right, well, uh, let's put that in our like three to five year plan. Yeah, race the Tulsa <laughs> shootout. Pencil it in there. We will start saving now, and we'll be able to do it. <laughs> Hopefully before I'm 25. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I missed the mark. <laughs> I'm re I really missed the mark. <laughs> I just turned 34. <laughs> I am okay. old. I just turned 27. Also, happy happy birthday on Friday, Ron. Happy birthday yeah. on. Another day that's close to mine. Yep. What, yesterday. Yesterday. I knew it was. <laughs> All right. It's that's birthday perfect. weekend for the Rip the Lip crew. That's right. Oh we'll have God. to meet. We'll have to meet up at some point, um, and just go have some beers or something, have, and just like a, a belated rip, birthday thing. That's have a, a Rip the Lip birthday party. Yes. I'll, I'll bring my juice boxes. There you go. <laughs> we'll make you some uh, Virgin Bloody Marys or something. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> That'd be great. No, we, we'll uh, we'll have to figure out something. Maybe we should have like a little get together Mark, at some point. Mark, Mark just called us kids. <laughs> oh my gosh! I guess I'm technically a kid in, in Mark's eyes. <laughs> We're all kids at heart. True. I feel. I mean, I still feel the same as I did when I was like 18. And hey, that's cool. you know, I have like three I... kids now, so like, I like watching the shows with them. <laughs> I'm like, Somebody this is found great. Out. Somebody found out yesterday was my birthday, and they're like, how old are you, 24? And I'm like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate the support. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's great. Uh, man, time, time flies. It does. It's crazy. It is super crazy. But uh, any any plans uh, to go to any of the other indoor races, Shelby, or maybe to, um, tr maybe to Trenton? So Trenton is definitely like, it's it's a maybe on um, not not racing for sure but i'll just to watch Gosh. but i know that michael was supposed to race the tulsa oh not the tulsa oh my gosh Trenton, Trenton mm -hmm. but he broke his leg <laughs> wait mike who michael Knopf. he broke his leg yeah when <laughs> no, i mean obviously i don't stay in contact with him or like you know he won't ever message back but still like, like <laughs> yeah. you're like, what's up, Mike? And then like two days later, he's like, nothing, man. Just <laughs> you, you, you get those like one word responses from him. Yeah. Three, so wait, that he called. broke it at work. So he was walking on the side of a trench and he uh, rolled his ankle over, and snapped that outer bone on the outside of your ankle. That that bone snapped in half, and now he's in a boot. It was like four weeks ago it oh. happened. I now I've broken the outside of the the bone that's on the outside of your foot. I've snapped that before. Yep, that's his situation right now. Gosh, I mean, was he on? He can't work, or maybe he runs. A, he's an operator. He could probably, probably. He's on. He's on workers' comp. Jesus Technically, Christ. He, 
He could still work, but it's the fact that he won't be able to get up into the machines. Hmm. Oh my god. So, Unbelievable. Yeah. I think he he should be getting out of the boot next week and getting a brace instead. But so, he's actually, he can actually walk on it pretty good now. Like He doesn't need crutches all the time so, just to get around at his house. Yeah, so now you fill his spot and go to Trent. Easy. He was already planning on going, yeah. right? Um, I'm going to try and convince him. I they try need to a driver. <laughs> but, Do it. Uh, <laughs> if uh, I had a car together, then maybe. Okay, okay. I'm like, maybe like one-fourth of the way there with my car. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we're at, we're at the point where everyone's, sent, everyone's uh, cars are out for uh, powder coating, probably. Or most yeah, people. Yeah, mine. Mine came back, I think, like last uh, last week, and then the Ooh. only thing we have done is the decals, and that's about it. Nice. Well, let me know when it's done. I'll have to come over and make a video. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Mark yeah. Daniel said, "I forgot Mark's birthday is a couple days after ours, so he is 53 this Tuesday. So happy birthday! Happy Mark. birthday, Mark! Happy birthday! Thank you for the support <laughs> for Shelby and for this channel. Very you are fair. a legend, my friend." That's awesome. Mark Mark has been by my side for so long. Even like even for my dad, for myself, he's just such a good person. He'll help you out with anything if you need help. He'll help you. Mm -hmm. And even like with the micros, it was kind of just me and my dad in the beginning. But he just started learning about the micros, just to, you know, help me a little bit more. And it actually, the night at Linda's for um for the speed week yeah he actually helped us give like help us with the setup and it worked <laughs> that's awesome i mean he's the reason we got billy pouch jr on here on this show too oh, really? so like yeah that was know, cool. he's great so we got a lot of cool stuff coming oh shelby guess what i got a drone we're gonna be making some really cool videos <laughs> with the drone oh. i'm telling everybody dude i'm i've been flying this thing around like crazy we're about to yeah, you practicing we're Make, about to like, take over Practice going in, in ovals over and over again. I'm gonna. Well, I live two minutes from the track. I'm gonna go there and fly it around the track. Beautiful. I mean, yeah. Well, and then I'm gonna try to find somebody to run around the track so I can <laughs> see if I can follow them. I think it'll go like 20 miles an hour. So. Get, get, yeah, get those Tulsa shootout shots. Yeah, that's the goal, man. We're gonna be making some sweet stuff. So you better come to Hamlin at least once. Oh, I plan on coming to Hamlin a couple times like, oh, okay. this year. Good, good. Because I really don't you venture. Watch out. You heard what happened to Randy's drone. What happened to Randy's drone? You didn't hear what happened to Randy's no, drone? No, I did not. I remember I saw one flying Randy, around here and there. Randy, Randy used to have his drone. He was flying around at Hamlin one day. It just like randomly disconnected for no reason and disappeared, oh. and he cannot find it. Well, this oh. this one's a little more updated, and if it disconnects, it, it just returns home. <laughs> Randy, yeah, so did Randy's. Oh, my God. It, it went back to the factory it was made at because he <laughs> looked for a while and could not find that thing. So it's just laying around Hamlet somewhere. It's somewhere out there where Danny landed when the first time he wrecked the micro there oh before the catch God. fence was there. <laughs> I will, I will, I will do my best not to not to lose it, but no guarantees. So far, so good at learning all the stuff about it. But it's got a 4K camera on it, so we got some 4K. What color? Six, is it? It's gray. What color is it? It's just a DJ. Oh. It's gray. Uh, it's gray. They set it to like okay. hover so you can do interviews on the drone camera as I well. I can. No, it, it, like if you're not on the sticks, it just hovers. It yeah, doesn't move. Just, you can just set it up and do interviews. No need yeah, to except, a except it's not like this. Yeah, imagine you're staring at a drone. <laughs> Everyone look this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh, that'd be great. But, yeah, we're, we're, we got some really cool stuff lined up. Uh, hopefully with, like, we'll do the drone, GoPro stuff. Uh, hopefully we'll have, uh, like, live scoring on the videos each week, which hopefully cool. will work. I figured out how, like, Dirt Track Digest does it, so we're going to mess around. I'm going to talk to my techie friends and see if we can figure it out. But, uh, yeah, we're kind of winding yeah. down at this point, but I really appreciate you taking the time and coming on the show and talking racing and just hanging out. This has been super fun. This is, like, one of the best episodes, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, definitely a lot of people are watching. <laughs> <laughs> we have, like, 30-plus 30, 30 people or something. I mean, I knew this one was going to be more popular than most even you know even more than billy pouch jr because like you still have i think the third highest viewed video on my channel was the, yeah, the first was like, the first yeah. uh interview we did together because it's like i don't know 2.7k views or something which is like wild 
So, I mean, you're a very, very popular driver, so I would assume you get a lot of good viewers here. But uh, the floor is yours at this point. I mean, any sponsors, people that have gotten you to where you're at, um, you know, any Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, whatever you're on. <laughs> Yeah, um, TikTok. That's hey, you you can get a lot of followers from TikTok. Don't don't laugh. No, I I know I have like over a thousand followers because I make like a bunch of racing videos. That's about it. <laughs> that's great. But I do have a list of a lot of sponsors and a lot of people that help me out here. Mm -hmm. So go for it. Definitely gonna start with my parents, because literally, obviously, without them, I would not be where I'm at right now with just getting like so much success in racing and just becoming that driver that my dad used to be you know it's just it's amazing to like just take over that spot for my dad and carry on the legacy and just all his help with the car like just him knowing what to do every single week just wrenching on it knowing setups just anything about the car he will know he will do it for you and just makes everything like makes the car better handle better makes it faster so without my dad I don't I don't I don't know what I would do honestly I don't even know where I'd be <laughs> and just even my mom just all the support that she gives me um letting me do all these crazy tracks all these big tracks even though she it makes her scared but she knows I can do it yeah she's so, always there <laughs> just, she's always just having faith in me that's all I need <laughs> and then definitely um Bob Hoffman he has been with me for since the beginning even when my dad first started racing, he was actually the person that got my dad into racing. He allowed my dad to join his go kart uh, team. And really? Was my, yeah, he just oh. my dad walked through the stairs one day, walked up, saw his, his giant go kart team, walked up, became friends, and I think a couple months later, a couple weeks later, he was just like, "Hey, get in my car," <laughs> and just kind of he's literally been by our side since I was before even I was in a car, and just providing me so much and even like just letting me race the 112 whenever I, I would like to race a slingshot again um just he's is just he's been our main sponsor for so long and just so much support from him and then um we'll bring up mark again mark <laughs> daniels you know good guy does does a lot for anybody he'll mm -hmm. Just overall, really good person. Helped me a lot. Um, I don't. I forgot how long ago it was that he sponsored me. I think it was maybe four years ago. In my, I had my seven car, and he just he, when he told me that he wanted to sponsor me, I just I knew that he was really committed to my racing and another just you know another person that had faith in me and it just you know it made me, it made me feel like a lot more confident in myself that people have this much faith in me, and just know that I can do it and just you know being a female in this racing community, it helps getting a lot of support from other people as well. And then, um, these, uh, most, the rest of these are a lot of new people that have jumped on board this year. So definitely, um, Joe and Brandy, the, they are the EMTs at Snydersville and they're, what is it? Their company, I want to say it's Raceway Fire and Safety. Yep, they, uh, they, they, had shared, they were sharing the stream before. Okay. They are watching. Um, so, yeah, definitely <clears throat> that. They just, I saw them at Snyder one day, and they came up to me and my dad and were like, hey, I am I want to be a part of your racing team and just help, you know, get, like, afford for things and just help out, like, you know, just a lot more support that we we as a team need and it's not it's not always easy with just you know me and my me and my parents and mm -hmm. just you know we need the, we need that extra help and just a boost in confidence and just just help in general so it was it's great to have them this year and then as well as uh bill reese he um oh my gosh who is he related <laughs> to who had a podcast uh i think it's garrett oh shalot yes i i think Bill is related to him. I think it's I. I yeah, because he has Reese on the side of his car. It must be the same. Family. Yes. So yeah, he was on his team, and he kind of mm -hmm. just came up one day at Hamlin when we had the micro and the slingshot. I was like, "Hey, I want to, I want to help." That, so that's so just, easy. Oh. It's perfect. Yeah, we were just like, "All right." I mean, it was the first time we met this guy, and now we're just like, you know, really good friends now. Yeah. Just, just as easy as walking up to somebody, you can make a new friend, and mm -hmm. just. Be a part of that, you know, racing team. 
So we have him. And then we also have my uncle, who is, his name is Jason. And he has a great company, uh, Classic Window and Glass, I'm pretty sure it is. And he just, he helps out with, um, like, building houses and, like, putting windows and just glass in. Mm -hmm. So really good company. I actually recommend going to him if you ever need stuff done. Um, But, yeah, he uh, jumped up on board this year. He also sponsors my other uncle. His name is Vern McLaughlin. He races... Uh, I want. I don't know what car. I want, I'm just gonna say stock car just to be safe here. <laughs> but I think he races like Bridgeport, um, New Egypt. It's probably so, street stock. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of just like a family thing, you know, sponsoring, helping yeah. out each other, with the family. Mm-hmm. And then another person that's been on board for a while is uh, Hairscape Salon. My mom actually used to be a hairstylist for like 25 years, and so obviously being best friends with her boss, she recognized my racing and decided to hop on board. Nice. And then, um, I guess those are all the main sponsors. Sure. But some other people that have helped us is definitely Donnie, Donnie Lang. He, uh, I think he just commented on the thing earlier. I'm not sure, mm-hmm. but he helped us out a lot. Out, oh my gosh, helped us out a <laughs> lot. When we had the slingshot, he actually helped us afford for the engine. So that nice. helped out a lot. You know, yeah. that's a lot of money. And then. Um, we, I mean, we, we've always been great partners with APS powder coating and just, you know, amazing stuff with the card makes the powder coat look amazing. A couple of years ago, he sponsored us for the powder coat, but I don't think he's giving out sponsorships as much anymore, but you know, it's all right. Still does an amazing job. Mm-hmm. And then obviously you, Ron, got to oh, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for you got thank all the support. You. <laughs> you, know, you got to help. You're helping a lot. We're trying. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have a good spot on my car this year, so. <laughs> Heck yeah. Gonna be very visible. <laughs> <laughs> and then. I appreciate it. Last but definitely not least, the Knopf family for sure. Um, I would not be where I'm at right now without their help and providing me such a good car and selling me this car. And um, Randy kind of just saw the way I was able to drive a slingshot and was like, kind of just like I see potential in her and I want to he just put me in his car one night and I was just like all right I guess we're doing this and ever since then he was just asked me to be on the team and we ended up being on the team for a lot of last season until we bought the car towards the end but Randy Michael for sure Michael gives out some of the best information you can receive even though he's a little confusing sometimes and talks (laughs) a little bit but he definitely gives out a lot for me and obviously with him being my boyfriend, he's going to help me with anything and I help him with anything. So, yeah. but yeah, definitely just a huge shout out to the Randy and just Knopf family in general. Just everything that they like, they helped us out with, supporting us, mm-hmm. giving, letting me carry on with my dream and getting onto something bigger than a slingshot. Yeah. It was really huge for me. And I think that's about it. Amazing. Kyle, you got any, any closing uh questions or no. thoughts or anything no not really i mean i'm looking forward i say this to every driver that i'm gonna end up racing <laughs> i'm looking forward to seeing you on the track next year um and you know obviously i raced with you in the slingshot and we had some good battles and i think toward the end of this year there was a race at hamlin we had a, a, a pretty good battle as well in the micro so i'm looking forward to uh getting to race with you more in this coming season I mean, hey, it's I, I think it's amazing that we both raced each other in slingshots. And now we're on to bigger and better things in the micros together as well. Yeah, you'll have to hop into TQ so we can race that at Atlantic City. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she already said no, no pavement, Kyle. All right, you wanna, no, okay, no all right, come on, all right, all right, no pavement. Let's go back to the Roval. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kyle's sure. undefeated in the Roval. Don't you forget what? it. Were you second or third? I, I got a good top three. I'll take third place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, I know you you got out of the car and Michael came over and was looking at my car. He's like, dude, I just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's looking at everything on the car and I'm just like, yeah, it's, I'm pretty good at this. I changed, stuff. I changed everything. It's also I, all that uh, Lehigh Valley Grand Prix stuff. <laughs> we can go there and race go karts too. Yeah, that, that, want to go. That'll be the rip to lip. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, I got employee. yelled at yesterday by my old boss who was there helping Kyle lick, and uh, I was trying to get him to sponsor the TQ for uh, Atlantic City and the rest of the season. He yelled at me because I don't go there and race anymore. So he was trying to convince me and Donaldson to go. So if we go, I'll let you know, and we should all go race there. Yep. Oh, boy. Have a little corporate party. 
Yeah, man. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. Out. Oh, you you mentioning Kyle Luck. He was actually the first person I ever threw a sly job on. Ooh. <laughs> like, did you, oh, was it clean or did you bop, did you bop his front tires? It was at Greenwood. I was at some big race. And I just, I remember, th like, I saw an opening. It was literally white flag. And I was like, I have to do it. Because he went to the top. I was like, I'm going to do it. It's going to be my first I'm time. I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I think my dad told me he could fit a credit card between our two bumpers when I slid, when I slid him. Oh, yeah. Like, no. But That's hey. Good. I just, That's oh, funny. It was good. I mean, hey, I Chris, think... Christian Bruno told me he learned how to do a slide job on iRacing. <laughs> so yeah. you really? should probably get some iRacing. Yeah. He said he said he was throwing sliders at, uh, in the midget with a bunch of other people, and then oh that got God. his confidence up to do it in the in the micro. And now look at him. <laughs> I gotta redo my eye racing membership. There you go. But <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we gotta have to uh, wind down here. Really appreciate you being on and uh, you know taking the time. I know we went we went a little bit overboard, but we also started pretty late, so almost an hour and a half. So didn't feel like an hour and a half. We could probably go for another hour, honestly. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you coming on and spending the time to talk with us and i'm i'm sure we will we'll meet again very very soon and uh i don't know i just like i really appreciate you taking the time anybody that comes on honestly just uh it's so cool to be able to talk to the drivers and pick their brain a little bit and especially having kyle on who has the racing experience i don't have is uh super super nice and uh i'm just really appreciative of you know you taking the time out of your day to come talk to us so i really appreciate it I mean, hey, communication is the best way to get to know another driver. True. So, uh, yep, so I guess this is uh, Over the Cushion signing off. Really appreciate everybody for watching, commenting, uh, supporting Shelby, supporting the show. Um, you know, we love racing and we like uh, talking to different drivers, so really appreciate everybody being here and watching. So uh, next week, I believe, uh, we'll have some promo stuff up for who's coming on next week. I think it's... Adriana Della Ponte. She's a modified yeah, driver for said, yeah. for uh, at Grandview. So that's going to be really cool. Um, getting to talk to her. Cause she's also a 600 driver as well. So that's going to be fun. So I appreciate everybody, uh, you know, stopping and saying hello. You know, engagement's great for this channel. So sharing, liking, commenting, all that good stuff. So thanks, Shelby, for being on. Thanks, Kyle, for sticking with me yeah. for 14 shows. And uh, <laughs> we'll just keep, keep it going, man. So really appreciate everybody. Uh, and we'll see you next week. Peace. Thank you.